Hey, so in this video, I'm going to teach you how to make this deep surfaces shader. Um, it's pretty interesting. It is a good showcase for what you can do with shader graph um, if you're a little creative. Um, and uh, you can see that it adds a lot of depth and dimension to materials. So if you're interested in learning a little bit about shader graph and interested in learning how to make a material that looks a little bit like this, um, then keep watching and you'll learn everything you need to know. Cool. So let's get started. So um, in this material, we use shader graph. The main drawback with using shader graph is obviously that when you're using shader graph, you either have to write all of your um, lighting yourself using the unlit master node, um, or you can use the lit master node, but you can't control any of the lighting calculations. And so um, that's like a big problem when you're using, you know, deep sort of thick materials like this, where you want to be able to express some lighting information um, in the in the material itself. And so I'm just going to kind of walk you through uh, the shader graph that I've made. And uh, if you want the full thing, it is available on the website. You can sign up and download it now. I'll leave a link in the description below. Um, but this video will kind of serve as a guide about how if you wanted to make this material yourself or if you want to adapt or extend this material for your specific project, uh, how you would be able to go about doing that. So uh, one thing that I won't go into detail in, in this video, but that we do have <clears throat> is um, the ability to bind a uh, light to this material. So um, when you add that light, you can move the light inside of the material and the material will look like it's casting or uh, receiving light from inside of the material. Now that's a little bit trickier because it does require um, you to add some C sharp, which I won't go into um, in this video, but if you want to check it out um, for yourself, it's, it's in that, uh, you know, link that I'll include. Cool. So um, before we actually show the shader graph, I think you might want to see a couple more examples. So here's another example of that shader in action. Um, in the other one, that was just the preview materials that had all the default settings on. This one is you know, a little bit different. Um, you can see it's a bit dark. So I did that on purpose. I think it looks kind of cool. Uh, but you can change the colors. You can make it a little brighter, for example. And then we also have this other one. These are just two example materials uh, kind of to help showcase what you can do. And I initially started developing this one thinking about ice, but realized that these sort of same techniques could be applied um, for any sort of deep, deep surface material. So the core of the technique that we're using here is uh, the parallax occlusion mapping. <clears throat> we'll go ahead and sort of get into it now. So, so the core of the technique that we're using here is the parallax occlusion mapping. So that's this right here. Parallax occlusion mapping is a technique that sort of um, normally when you're drawing the uh, texture, like this height map texture, normally when you're drawing that texture, you sort of just draw on the surface once of the material. With the parallax occlusion mapping, you can draw it multiple times. And you can, um, when you're drawing it, you're saying, I want this material to be drawn as if it were within the surface uh, of, of this material. And so that amplitude option is saying how far into the surface do we want to draw this, you know, this material. And the steps um, is saying, so we actually want to sample the material, the texture, as few times as possible. So the steps is saying how many times do you want to sample that material. Now, higher step counts um, allow you to get sort of more detail. But uh, if you only do one step, then it makes it look like you just took this entire entire texture and just inset it into the material. So I'll show you an example of how that kind of looks. If we use this other one for effect, and then we jump over here to the, um, oh my god. <laughs> if we jump over here to the steps, uh, you can see here we're using 12 steps. Now if we change that to just one step, and we lower the noise, you can see that it's kind of hard to tell with all the settings on, but you can see that it sort of just takes that texture and just shoves it in um, instead of having these multiple layers. So now as I bring these layers up, you can see, especially around the edges, um, those additional layers coming into effect. 
And then here we're using this noise texture to uh, offset those textures um, sort of per, per pixel. And I'll get into that in a sec. So jumping back into the shader graph, um, I think it makes the most sense to work backwards. So we'll do that. So starting with the base color. For the base color, we um, the last thing that we do is we blend together the two, the two main colors, the depth color and the surface color. And so um, the way that we do that is with a lerp node. And the input that we have to the lerp node is um, another lerp node. But this one is basically like a, a sort of like a height map, if you will, that describes how deep into the surface um, the, the material is or how far away from the, the deepest part of the surface the texture is. So when it's black, that's saying that we really just want to use the depth color. And when it's white, it's saying that we really just want to use the surface color. And so these gradations let you create a sort of detailed look. And we have a center deepening option that's basically like um, a Fresnel uh, effect. And so the way that that works, I press Control Z and Unity just does this whenever you're working. Oh, great, with a graph. So, <clears throat> so the center deepening interpolates between this Fresnel effect so the Fresnel, very high level, just does n dot v. So how aligned is your you know, view vector with the normal vector? If it's very aligned, like if your view vector and the normal vector are completely um, parallel, then it returns 0 like this here. And if they're completely perpendicular like here, then it um, returns 1. Now, um, You have the multiply and you have the power. So these are just different options for how we blend together this Fresnel effect. And then moving back over here, we have that sort of raw height map that we uh, built and that we're passing into that center deepening effect. And the way that we get that is we take um, We, um, let's see here. <laughs> so um, what we do like sort of right before we blend together the, the depth is we uh, have this noise and that kind of lets us add a little extra texture. So you can see here we have this little texture here and that adds just a little bit of extra texture to this effect. And we blend that together basically like as a multiply. So what we're doing here is we're generating the noise and then we're inverting it or uh, remapping it so that it goes between negative one and one. And then we're reducing it so that it's only like, you know, between negative 0.1 and positive 0.1. And then we're mapping that to a range of um, like 0.9 to 1.1 and then we're multiplying it by that effect. And the input for that is this blend height map. So this is like our final blend height map. You can see that there's not too much of a difference from that noise, but it does add just a little bit of extra detail. So I think that's quite nice. And for this, we're using a blend um, node with the overlay mode, and you can control the height blending. And for the um, base, we'll go into the base first. To generate the base, we generate the, um, we use the parallax occlusion mapping node to get parallax UVs based on the height map. And then we use those parallax UVs to sample uh, the height map. And um, you can change the number of steps. And the amplitude is um, calculated automatically based on the um, height offset and some noise that we're using. So that adds a little bit of noise, like what I was showing earlier, to the parallax effect. And then we also reduce the uh, amount, the amplitude. We reduce the amount of um, depth that we add as the, uh, as the grazing angle increases. So as you get closer to the edge of the surface. And so what that does is it basically makes the center seem deeper than the edges. Uh, and then we have the offset over here. So this offset, um, in this shader, the actual texture is being offset over time. We use kind of this sneaky little trick where we just take the UVs, we scale them up so that it tiles, 
Um, and then we offset the UVs over time. And then we take the side of that. So it gives us something like this. Yeah. And then we can um, control the extent to which it you know, modulates. And that sort of just adds a little bit of wiggling and wobbling to the offset over time. Um, so that's the base. And then the blend, we basically repeat that exact same steps, but with the overlay height map instead of the uh, base height map. Now for the normal map, we do have a normal map here. Uh, the UV is also adjusted by the parallax occlusion map UVs, so that adds a little bit more depth here. I think that's quite good. Um, don't need this. And then you can just control the strength of the normal there. Uh, this fake lighting, I'm not going to get into. And uh, then when we come down to the emission, uh, the emission is pretty interesting. So basically, like um, this is nice, but it's nice to add a little bit more extra detail on top of this. So for the emission, we try and find the edge, um, and you can map the sort of depth emission and the surface emission based on that height map that we had generated. And you can use this edge to, uh, we're using smooth step, so you can take this edge. So if we go, jump over here and we open this, and then we adjust this edge, you can see how it kind of cuts into the surface there, causing the surface emission to only be applied on, you know, some sections of it. And we re repeat that process, but backwards for the depth. Press Control Z again for the depth. So for the depth, we um, you know take that same height map just like we do here, and then we just do one minus, so we get the invert, and then we can take the depth edge like that, and that gives us where should the depth emission be coming from. So this is basically this, but completely flipped. Then we add those emissions together. Uh, we blend together that sort of fake lighting that I mentioned that I'm not going to talk about, and then we bring that into the emission. Uh, we also affect the ambient occlusion. I think this just looks a little better. So you can reduce the amount of... Um, you can reduce the... like You can take the ambient occlusion value and set it to zero so that it's not receiving any uh, ambient lighting uh, deeper into the material. And that's what this ambient occlusion power does is it sort of tells you how much do we want to reduce the uh, lighting as we get deeper in there. Uh, we also have a roughness option. So this roughness is mapped just based on the UVs. So it's basically like on top the the surface of the material. Um, what we do is we generate like a sort of auto smoothness based on the height map. So we say, okay, things closer to the surface, we'll say are um, a little bit uh, more smooth and things deeper down, let's say are less smooth. That just adds a little base, bit of base variation. And then on top of that, we have a roughness map that you can input. That roughness map takes an exposure value, so it just lets you map it um, based on like, do you want it to be more rough or less rough? Uh, and I think that that tends to work better using the exposure. And um, then we one minus it so that we get back to smoothness, and then we blend these together using the roughness as the base. And then you have an opacity option for the extent to which you use the auto smoothness. And then that gets piped into the smoothness. So overall, um, pretty simple for the normals. Yeah, I think we went into that already. Pretty straightforward. Um, so yeah, that's the shader. I think it's pretty cool. It adds a lot of flexibility to how you might want to express like deeper surface, deeper surface oriented materials. Um, and uh, if you'd like to like sort of get get the shader, I know this is probably you know, not super easy to follow, but if you um, would like to actually get the shader, I'll include the link uh, in the description. And um, yeah, you'll be able to go ahead and download that and use it in your projects. So I um, can't wait to see what, what you guys make with it. Um, and I think it's really cool. And it adds a lot of sort of dynamism and uh, you know, cool stuff to your project. So all right, hope this was helpful and uh, see you guys soon. Cheers.